Assalamualaikum and a good day to all of you. Today we're going to start the third chapter, the third topic for organic chemistry, which is introduction to organic molecules and functional groups. When we look at organic molecules, of course, in every organic molecule, mostly other than L, uh, other than alkenes, they all have functional groups. Actually, what is a functional group? A functional group is an atom or a group of atoms with characteristic chemical and physical properties. It is direct the reactive part of the molecule. Most organic compounds have carbon-carbon bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds. However, many organic compounds possess other structural features. Okay, other than uh, carbon and carbon carbon bonds and hydrogen carbon hydrogen bonds we have features like heteroatoms which are atoms other than carbon or hydrogen we will also have pi bonds the most common pi bonds occur in carbon carbon bonds and also in carbon oxygen double bonds these structural features distinguish one organic molecule from another. They determine a, mo a molecule's geomet geometry, physical properties, and reactivity. And this compromises of the functional group. Heteroatoms and pi bonds confer reactivity on a particular molecule. Heteroatoms have lone pairs and create electron diffusion sites on carbon. Pi bonds are easily broken in a chemical reaction. A pi bond makes a molecule a base and a nucleophile. As we can see in the diagram, the lone pairs make oxygen a base and a nucleophile, whereas the carbon is electron division and it, it, it is now the electrophile. The pi bond makes a compound a base and also a nucleophile in the carbon carbon between the two carbon atoms that this pi bond can be easily broken don't you think that carbon carbon and carbon hydrogen bonds are unimportant they form the carbon backbone or skeleton to which the functional group is attached for example we look at ethane this molecule only has carbon carbon single bonds and carbon hydrogen bonds so it has no functional groups ethane has no polar bonds no lone pairs and also no pi bonds so it has no reactive sites consequently ethane and molecules like it are very unreactive an example of a molecule with heteroatom is ethanol this molecule has an OH group attached to its backbone. This functional group is called a hydroxy group. Ethanol has lone pairs and polar bonds that make it reactive with a variety of reagents. The hydroxy group makes the properties of ethanol very different from the properties of ethane. Let's compare both ethane and ethanol as given in the diagram. We look at the structure of ethane. All the carbon carbon bonds are, sing are single bonds and the carbon hydrogen bonds are also single sigma bonds. There are no functional groups. In ethanol, we can see there are two polar bonds which is the carbon-oxygen bonds and also the oxygen-hydrogen bonds. And also, there are two lone pairs on the oxygen atom. So this, this makes ethanol a very reactive compound as compared to ethane. Hydrocarbons are compounds made up of only elements of carbon and hydrogen. They may be aliphatic or Aromatic. Aliphatic hydrocarbons are as given in the table, in the following table, table 3.1. You can see alkenes, alkenes, and alkynes. These are 
aliphatic hydrocarbons. Hydro aromatic hydrocarbons are compounds like benzene and those that are derived from the benzene group. A characteristic of aromatic compounds is that they all have odors. So, and the simplest aromatic hydrocarbon is benzene. This six-membered ring has three pi, pi bonds and it comprises a single functional group. When a benzene ring is bonded to another group, it is called a phenyl group, given by the symbol pH. As we can see in the following diagram, the structure of a benzene molecule, which is C6H6, and a phenyl group, which is C6H5. Other functional groups of organic compounds are as given in table 3.2. We look at the first compound, which is the alkyl halide. It has a general structure of Rx, where X can be fluoride, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And the functional group is the halo group. For example, we can have a structure of, for example, is methyl bromide, and we can see the structure as follows. This is the 3D structure of methyl bromide. The carbon is sp3 hybridized and there are four bonds. Yeah. Next group of compounds are alcohols. Alcohols have a general structure of ROH. An example of an alcohol is methyl alcohol or methanol, which is CH3OH with the hydroxy group as the functional group. And an uh, example of the structure is as follows. This is the 3D structure of methanol. This is the hydroxy group. This carbon is sp3 hybridized and the oxygen is also sp3 hybridized. It has two sigma bonds and there are two lone pairs. The next organic compound is ether. Ether has a general structure of R, O, R. An example of an ether is the dimethyl ether, which is CH3O, CH3. And the alkoxy group, the OR group, is the functional group. And the structure of dimethyl ether is as follows. This is the structure of dimethyl ether. It has two sigma bonds between carbon and oxygen. The rest are sigma bonds with hydrogen. All the atoms, carbon, oxygen, and uh, this carbon, they are all sp3 hybridized. And the alkoxy group comprises of the oxygen and the carbon atom. Amines. Amines have the general structure of RNH2 or R2NH or R3N. An example of an amine is methyl amine, which is CH3NH2. And the amino group NH2 is the functional group, functional group. And an example for a methyl amine is as follows. This is the structure of methyl amine. It shows the carbon nitrogen bond, which is a sigma bond. This carbon is sp3 hybridized. The nitrogen is also sp3 hybridized. It has a lone pair. This is the amino group. Yeah. Another example of, comp of organic compounds containing sigma bonds with the functional group is the Thiol. Thiol has the general structure of RSH and the functional group is the Mercaptor group which is the SH. An example is methyl SH and we can see a structure of this compound as follows. This is the 3D structure of a methyl thiol. In methyl thiol, just like in the methyl, methanol, we have the carbon 
now attached to the sulfur atom and this is a sigma bond the sulfur has actually two lone pairs and this is called the Mercaptor group yeah. okay. another example of functional groups containing sigma bonds is the sulfide sulfides have a general structure of RSH and the R SR is the alkyl, the alpha alkyl thiol group is the functional group. A general example is the dimethyl sulfide, and we can be which can be seen as follows. This is a dimethyl sulfide. This is now the this group is now called the methyl thiol. The following slides just shows two compounds, two organic compounds. One is diethyl ether and the other is hemibrevitoxin B. These are some structures of organic compounds. Okay, now we are going to look at organ organic compounds that have the CO, the double bond groups. And we can see the first one we're going to talk about is are the aldehydes. Aldehydes have a general structure of C double bond O with a hydrogen attached to the carbonyl carbon. And the carbonyl carbon is the functional group. Example for this is the acetaldehyde. And a, a 3D structure can be seen as follows. This is the structure of N aldehyde. This is ethanol. This is the carbonyl group and this is the hydrogen that is attached to the carbonyl carbon. The next group are ketones. Ketones have a general structure of two alkyl groups attached to the carbonyl groups. The functional group is still the same as the aldehydes but the difference is that the aldehyde has a hydrogen attached to the carbonyl groups whereas ketones have two alkyl groups attached to the carbonyl groups. Example is acetone and a, a 3D structure of this compound is seen as follows. This is the structure of a ketone. This is acetone. Acetone has three carbon atoms and you can see the middle is the carbonyl group and there are two alkyl groups attached to the carbonyl group. Carboxylic acids also have C double bond O, which is the carbonyl group. But the whole functional group is the COOH, which we call the carboxy group. And an example is acetic acid. Acetic acid, the structure of an acetic acid is seen as follows. This shows the structure of acetic acid. Acetic acid is one of the most common carboxylic acid. As we can see, this structure has the carbonyl carbon and also the hydroxy group attached to the carbonyl carbon. And this whole group we call the carboxy group. Okay, the next group of compounds that we are going to look at are esters. Esters have more or less the same structure as carboxylic acids with the only difference where there are there is no hydroxy group, but there is an alkoxy group, which is the OH is changed to the OR. And the functional group is the COOR. An example is methyl acetate. And the structure of this compound is seen as follows. This shows the structure of methyl acetate. An ester consists of the carbonyl carbon, and also the alkoxy carbon. This alkoxy carbon has the alkyl group attached to the oxygen. Okay. Amides are actually derivatives of the carboxylic acid. And we can see the structure of an amide differs from the carboxylic acid between the hydroxy group and the amino group, which is the NH2. And then we can see also the functional groups for this compound 
can be either CO and H2, CO and HR, or CO and R2. So the hydrogen atoms on the on the nitrogen can be can be changed by an alkyl group. An example of an amide is the acetamide, which is CH3COH, and the structure is seen as follow. This shows the structure of an amide. An amide has the carbonyl carbon and we have an amino group attached to the carbonyl carbon. This amino group can this can also be alkyl groups instead of hydrogens. The last organic compound that we are going to see today is are acid chlorides. Acid chlorides are also derivatives of the carboxylic acid and the difference between this compound with the carboxylic acid is the OH where the OH is uh, substituted by the Cl the chloride in the acid chloride an example of acid chloride is the CH3COCl with the COCl as the functional group a structure of this compound is seen as follows this is the structure of S of an acid chloride. As in all derivatives of the carboxylic acid, there is the carbonyl group, and we have the chlorine attached to the carbonyl group in the acyl chloride. We are now going to look at compounds containing the C double bond O group. This group is called a carbonyl group. The polar CO bond makes the carbonyl carbon an electrophile, while the lone pairs on oxygen allows it to react as a nucleophile and also as a base. The carbonyl group also contains a pi bond that is more easily broken than a CO sigma bond. So let us look at the given diagram. As we can see now, the C double bond O, there are there is a pi bond which is easily broken. The carbon is electron deficient, so it is positive like uh, it is partially positively charged. And the oxygen atom, since oxygen is a more electronegative atom, it is positive uh, negatively charged. The following slide shows two examples of two common drugs. One is ethanolol which is an antihypertensive agent. You can see the structure of ethanolol. It has several functional groups. One is the imide. Another is the aromatic ring, of the which is the benzene ring. And we also have ether, alcohol, and amine. In Varicep, which is an anti-HIV agent, the functional groups that is present are the aromatic ring, the sulfide, the amide, the hydroxy, which is bonded to a benzene ring. And this functional group is called a phenol. And we have amines, alcohols, and also amides. A functional group determines all of the following properties of a molecule. The bonding and shape of the molecule the type and strength of intermolecular forces and also the physical properties, the nomenclature and also the chemical reactivity. When we talk about molecules, there are also intermolecular forces that exist between the molecules. Now these intermolecular forces are interactions of the functional groups and these functional groups will determine the type and strength of these interactions. There are several types of intermolecular interactions. One is the ion-ion interaction, where we have interaction, strong electro electrostatic interactions between positive and negative charges. Ionic compounds contain oppositely charged particles held together by extremely strong electrostatic interactions. 
these ionic interactions are much stronger than the intermolecular forces present between covalent molecules. Covalent compounds are compounds that are composed of discrete molecules. The nature of the forces between molecules depends on the functional groups present. There are three different types of interactions shown below in order of increasing strength. The first is van der Waals forces, dipole-dipole interactions, and hydrogen bonding, where the van der Waals forces are the weakest of the forces and hydrogen bonding is the stronger. Van der Waals forces are also known as London forces. They are actually weak interactions caused by momentary changes in electron density in a molecule. They are the only attractive forces present in non-polar compounds, as in the alkenes. An example of van der Waals forces that exist in a molecule, let us look at the methane, which is the CH4. This molecule has no net dipole. Its electron density may not be completely symmetrical, resulting in a temporary dipole, as seen in the diagram below. The weak interaction of these temporary dipoles constitutes the van der Waals forces. As we can see in the diagram below, when the van der Waals forces interact between two CH4 molecules, the unsymmetrical electron density will create a temporary dipole-dipole moment. All compounds exhibit van der Waals forces. The surface area of a molecule determines the strength of the van der Waals interactions between molecules. The larger the surface area, the larger the attractive force between the two molecules and the stronger the inter intermolecular forces. Let us look now at the figure given where the surface area and van der Waals forces are concerned. We look at the first, which is pentane. It is a long and cylindrical molecule. It has a larger surface area and therefore as it has stronger van der Waals interactions. A more compact molecule as in neopentane, neopentane has also five carbon atoms as in pentane. But since it is a more compact and spherical molecule, it has a smaller surface area. Therefore, its van der Waals forces are much weaker. Van der Waals forces are also affected by polarizability. Polarizability is a measure of how the electron cloud around an atom responds to changes in its electronic environment. Let us look at an example of this. Consider the molecule fluorine. Fluorine is, of course, much smaller than iodine. Being small, being a smaller sized molecule, it has less polarizable atoms. And therefore, the van der Waals forces between the two mo molecules of uh, fluorine are weaker as compared to the two molecules of iodine. Iodine have larger polarizable atoms and the van der Waals forces between two molecules of iodine will have a, will be much stronger. Larger atoms like iodine have more loosely held valence electrons and they are more polarizable as compared to smaller atoms like fluorine. Fluorine have more tightly held electrons. Two molecules of fluorine have little attractive force between them since the electrons are tightly held and temporary dipoles are difficult to induce. Dipole-dipole interactions are the attractive forces between the permanent dipoles of two polar molecules. 
Let us consider acetone as given in the diagram below. The dipoles in adjacent molecules align so that the partial positive and partial negative charges are in close proximity. These attractive forces caused by permanent dipoles are much stronger than the weak van der Waals forces. So, as we can see in the diagram given, the oxygen side of the molecule will have the partial negative charge and the carbon side of the carbonyl bond will have the positive charge. So, there is a net attraction of the permanent dipoles and these are actually dipole-dipole interactions. The strongest amongst the three intermolecular forces is the hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding typically occurs when a hydrogen atom is bonded to oxygen, nitrogen or chlorine and is electrostatically attracted to a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen, nitrogen or fluorine atom in another molecule. Let us look at the example of a water molecule, H2O. We can see there is an attraction between the hydrogen of one molecule with the uh, hydrogen of another mo water molecule. And this attraction is called the hydrogen bond. We should note that as the polarity of an organic molecule increases, so does the strength of its intermolecular forces. Looking at table 3.4, we can see Van der Waals forces have the weakest strength. So it is exhibited by all molecules, which is which are molecules like all alkenes and those that have hetero and also those that have hetero atoms. In dipole-dipole attractions, the strength of this intermolecular force are just moderate and the molecules will have a net dipole-dipole moment and this is exhi exhibited in most of the molecules that have hetero atoms. The next one is hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is the strongest amongst the three intermolecular force and these are only exhibited by molecules that have bonds between hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen and nitrogen or hydrogen with fluorine and of course the strongest of all the intermolecular forces is of course the ionic, the, the ionic bonding which is a force between Two, uh, ions that are oppositely charged and this is exhibited by all ionic compounds. Common examples are like sodium chloride, lithium chloride and as when we compare the strength of ionic bonds of course they are the strongest as compared to those of the hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole and also the van der Waals forces. We are now going to discuss the physical properties of organic compounds. The first physical property that we are going to discuss are boiling points. So the boiling point of a compound is the temperature at which liquid molecules are converted into gas. In boiling, energy is needed to overcome the attractive forces in the more ordered liquid state. So the stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher is the boiling point. Compounds with approximately same molecular weight, that is compounds with only van der Waals forces, will have the same strength of intermolecular forces as compared to those compounds with dipole-dipole attractions. And the compounds with hydrogen bondings will, will of course have the highest strength of Inter intermolecular forces and of course will have the highest boiling point. So consider the following example. 
Note that the relative strength of the intermolecular forces increases from pentane to butanol to 1 butanol. The boiling points of these compounds increase in the, in the same order. Let us look at first pentane, which has a boiling point of 36 degrees Celsius. Butanol has a boiling point of 76 degrees Celsius. And 1 butanol has a boiling point of 118 degrees Celsius. In pentane, we only have Van der Waals forces, but in butanol, we have dipole dipole interactions. Whereas in one butanol, will, there are hydrogen bondings intermolecularly. So there is an increasing in the strength of molecular forces with increasing in the boil with in the boiling point. Comparing two compounds with similar functional groups. We can see the larger the surface area, the larger would be the boiling point. The more polarizable the atoms, the higher is the boiling point. Consider the examples below. These examples illustrate first the effect of size and also polarizability on boiling, point, on boiling points. Okay, in the first example, we can see 3 pentanone and acetone. 3 pentanone has 5 carbon atoms and it has a larger surface area. Therefore, it will have a higher boiling point. Boiling point of 3 pentanone is 102 degrees Celsius. In acetone, which has only 3 carbon atoms, the surface area is much smaller. So the boiling point is also lower at 56 degrees Celsius. And the next example we can see is the effect of polarizability. In, in iodomethane, more, the more polarizable iodine atom will have will give the molecule a higher boiling point at 42 degrees Celsius. In fluoromethane, the less polarizable fluorine atom makes the molecule gives the molecule a lower boiling point at minus 78 degrees Celsius. Okay, the following diagram shows how we can separate two compounds that have different boiling points using a distillation apparatus. This distillation apparatus consists of the round bottom flask where the mixture of two liquids are put in and then it is attached to there is a thermometer and, of course, the condenser where vapors are collected with, and also the receiver. And, as we can see, this mixture is first heated and the more volatile component will be vaporized first. And then, the vapors will be collected when the mixture is heated. Of course, the one with the lower boiling point will evaporate first. So the vapors in contact with the cool glass condense to form pure liquid distillate. And this is collected in the receiver. And by period periodically changing the receiver flask, one can collect compounds having different boiling points in separate flasks. The next physical property that we are going to discuss is melting point. The melting point is the temperature at which a solid is converted to its liquid phase. In melting, energy is needed to overcome the attractive forces in the more ordered crystalline solid. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the melting point. So given the same functional group, the more symmetrical the compound, the higher is the melting point. Ionic compounds are held together by extremely strong interactions. They have very high melting points. With covalent molecules, the melting point depends upon the identity of the functional group. For compounds of approximately the same molecular weight, compounds with Van der Waals forces will have the same melting points 
and but they will have the lowest of all as compared to compounds with dipole-dipole interactions and compounds with hydrogen bonding. So when we increase the strength of the intermolecular forces of the compound, the melting point of the compound will also increase. An example of a trend in melting points can be seen as follows. You can see pentane that has no, that is a non-polar molecule, has a melting point of minus 130 degrees Celsius, where only Van der Waals forces exist. And we can have butanol that have dipole-dipole interactions, have a met a melting point of minus 96 degrees Celsius and one butanol that has hydrogen bonding have a melting point of minus 90 degrees Celsius. Symmetry also plays a very important role in determining the melting points of the compounds with the, function, with the same functional group and also similar molecular weights but with different shapes. A compact symmetrical molecule like neopentane packs well into a crystalline lattice, whereas isopentane, which has a CH3 group dangling from a 4 carbon chain, does not. Thus, neopentane has a much higher melting point than isopentane. You can see in the diagram given here isopentane which has a melting point of minus 160 degrees celsius is less symmetrical it's a less symmetrical molecule whereas neopentane has a melting point of minus 17 degrees celsius because the structure has more symmetry solubility is also another characteristic of compounds that we are going to study. Solubility is the extent to which a compound called a solute dissolves in a liquid which is called a solvent. In dissolving a compound, the energy needed to break up the interactions between the molecules or ions of the solute comes from the interactions between the solute and the solvent. Looking at the diagram, the one on the left shows interactions between the solute-solute molecules and the solvent-solvent molecules. And on gaining energy, new interactions will occur between the solute and the solvent as given in the right-hand side diagram. Compounds dissolve in solvents having similar kinds of intermolecular forces. Light dissolves light. For instance, polar molecules Polar compounds dissolve in polar solvents. Non-polar or weakly polar compounds will dissolve in non-polar or weakly polar solvents. Water and organic solvents are two different types of solvents. Water is very polar and is capable of hydrogen bonding with the solute. Many organic solvents are either non-polar like carbon tetrachloride and hexane or weakly polar like diethyl ether and most ionic compounds are soluble in water but insoluble in organic solvents. An organic compound is water soluble only if it contains one polar functional group capable of hydrogen bonding with the solvent of every five carbon atoms it contains. For example, let's compare the solubility of butane and acetone in water and carbon tetrachloride. Butane is soluble in carbon tetrachloride but it is insoluble in water. Acetone is soluble in both carbon tetrachloride and also in water. Since butane and acetone are both organic compounds having carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen backbone, they are soluble in the organic solvent 
HCl4. Butane, which is non-polar, is insoluble in water. Acetone is soluble in water because it contains only three carbon atoms and its oxygen atom can hydrogen bond with the hydrogen from the with the hydrogen atom from water. Now we can see as given in the diagram the acetone the oxygen of the acetone can form hydrogen bond with the hydrogen atom of water. And this hydrogen bonding makes the small the small polar molecule of acetone water soluble. To dissolve an ionic compound, the strong ion-ion interactions must be replaced by the many weaker ion dipole interactions. Looking at this diagram, we can see when an ionic solid is dissolved in water, the ion-ion interactions are replaced by the ion dipole interactions. Though these forces are weaker, there are so many of them that they compensate for the stronger ionic bonds. The size of an organic molecule with a polar functional group determines its water solubility. A low molecular weight alcohol like ethanol is water soluble since it has a small carbon skeleton of less than five carbon atoms compared to the size of its polar hydroxyl group. Cholesterol has 27 carbon atoms and only one hydroxide group. Its carbon skeleton is too large for the hydro hydroxide group to solubilize by hy hydrogen bonding. So cholesterol is insoluble in water. Okay, the non-polar part of a molecule that is not attracted to water is said to be hydrophobic. The polar part of a molecule that can hydrogen bond to water is said to be hydrophilic. In cholesterol, for example, the hydroxy group is hydrophilic, whereas the carbon skeleton is hydrophobic. Let us look at a summary of the solubility of certain compounds in water and organic solvents. Looking at figure 3.5, we see the ionic compound here is sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is very soluble in water, but it is not soluble in the organic solvents such as carbon tetrachloride. For covalent compounds, we can see, for example, an alkane like butane is insoluble in water because it has no nitrogen or oxygen atoms to hydrogen bond to water but butane is soluble in organic solvents and the next compound which is 1-propanol 1-propanol has less than 5 carbon atoms and it has an oxygen atom for hydrogen bonding to water so it is very soluble in water and it is also very soluble in organic solvents. And the next compound, which is Uno de Decanol. Uno Decanol is insoluble in water because it has more than five carbon atoms. It is too large to be soluble even though it has an oxygen atom for hydrogen bonding with water. And Uno Decanol is very soluble in organic solvents such as carbon tetrachloride. Let us look at vitamins now. Vitamins are actually organic compounds which are needed in small amounts for normal cell function. Most cannot be synthesized in our bodies and must be obtained from our diets. Most are identified by, the, by a letter such as A, C, T, E, and K. There are several different B vitamins, so a subscript is added to, disting to distinguish them. Examples are 
B1, B2, and B12. Vitamins are fat soluble. They that is they dissolve in organic media or they are also water soluble. Vitamins A and C illustrate the differences between fat soluble and water soluble vitamins. Vitamin A or retinol may be obtained directly from the diet. In addition, beta carotene, the orange pigment found in many plants, including carrots, is readily converted into vitamin A in our bodies. Vitamin A is an essential component of the vision receptors in our eyes. It also helps to maintain the health of mucous membranes and skin. Vitamin A is water soluble. Vitamin C or ascorbic acid is important in the formation of collagen. It is obtained from eating citrus fruits. Vitamin C de deficiency results in scurvy. It is heavily hydroxylated, which makes it capable of hydrogen bonding. Thus, it is water soluble. Let us now look at some applications of solubility in water. We consider soap. When we dissolve soap in water, we find that the soap molecules have two distinct parts, which is a hydrophilic portion composed of ions called the, the polar head and a, and a hydrophobic carbon chain of non-polar carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds called the non-polar tail. Looking at the picture given, you can see right in the middle is the non-polar interior of the soap micelle. And the soap consisting of the polar head has the ions, which is the sodium and the alkoxide ion, and the tail composed of the non-polar carbon chain. When soap is dissolved in water, the molecules from my cells, the molecules from my cells with the non-polar tails in the interior and the polar heads on the surface. The polar heads are solvated by ion dipole interactions with water. Another application can be seen in the cell membrane. Figure 3.7 shows the cell membrane. Phospholipids contain an ionic head or polar head and two long non-polar hydrocarbon tails. In an aqueous environment, phospholipids form a lipid bilayer with the polar heads oriented towards the aqueous exterior and the non-polar tails forming a hydrophobic interior. Cell membranes are composed largely of this lipid bilayer. Yeah. Polar molecules and ions are transported across cell membranes encapsulated within molecules called ionophores. Ionophores are organic molecules that complex cations. They have a hydrophobic exterior that makes them soluble in the nonpolar interior of the cell membrane and a central cavity with several oxygen atoms whose loose lone pairs complex with a given ion. For instance, we look at nonectin and valinomycin. You can see these two molecules have a lot of oxygen atoms attached in the crown of the molecule. And we can see now each molecule will contain a large cavity to hold an anion within the cyclic structure. Okay, ions can be transported across a cell membrane by binding an ion on one side of a lipid bilayer where the concentration of the ion is high and releasing it to the other side of the bilayer where the concentration of the ion is low. An ionophore transports an ion across a cell membrane as seen in the diagram given. Several synthetic ionophores have also been prepared including one group called crown ethers. 
crown ethers are cyclic ethers containing several oxygen atoms that bind specific cations depending on the size of their cavity. In the diagram given, we can see a crown ether with a, with, that is complex with the potassium cation. Okay, let us look now at the influence of functional groups on reactivity. We know that functional groups create reactive sites in molecules. Electron-rich sites react with electron-poor sites. All functional groups contain a heteroatom, a pi bond, or both. And these features create electron diffusion or electrophilic sites and electron-rich or nucleophilic sites in a molecule. Molecules react at these sites. The following shows the influence of functional groups on reactivity. We see an electronegative heteroatom like nitrogen, oxygen or a halogen makes a carbon atom electrophilic. For instance, look at ethyl chloride. The carbon chlorine bond is polar. So, now we see the carbon is the electrophilic site since chlorine is more electronegative and chlorine is now the nucleophilic site. And at the cyclohexanol, looking at cyclohexanol, we can see since oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, the carbon in the ring now becomes the electrophilic site. A lone pair on a heteroatom makes it basic and nucleophilic. Looking at the examples given, dimethyl ether, in dimethyl ether, we can see there are two lone pairs on the oxygen atom. And in trimethyl amine, there is a lone pair on the nitrogen atom. These are the basic and nucleophilic sites. Pi bonds create nucleophilic sites and are more easily broken than sigma bonds. Looking at the example given, we see an alkene. An alkene has a pi bond and also an acetylene. The acetylene has two pi bonds. An electron diffusion carbon reacts with the nucleophile and then this nucleophile is symbolized by NU negative. An electron rich carbon reacts with an electrophile and this electrophile is symbolized by E positive. For example, alkenes contain an electron rich double bond and so they react with electrophiles can see in the given diagram here, electron-rich alkene will react with the electro, with the electron-poor electrophile. On the other hand, alkahalides possess an electrophilic carbon atom, so they react with electron-rich nucleophiles. Given the ethyl chloride, the carbon that is attached to the chlorine is electron-poor, and the nucleophile will attack this electron poor carbon. So alkyl halides react with nucleophiles. Biomolecules are also organic compounds and they are found in biological systems. Many are relatively small with molecular weights of less than 1000 grams per mole. There are four main families of small molecule biomolecules. 1. Simple sugars. Simple sugars will combine to form complex carbohydrates like starch. Nucleotides, they are the building blocks of DNA. Amino acids will join together to form proteins. Fatty acids are the building blocks of triacylglycerols, lipids that are stored as fat droplets in adipose tissues. Biomolecules often have several functional groups. Simple biomolecules are the building blocks of more complex biomolecules, which then compose important cellular structures. For instance, we see glucose, a simple sugar. It will form the helical starch molecule, and these starch grains are found within a chloroplast. And deoxyadenine is a nucleotide which can form a double helix. It is the 
in the DNA and these are found in the chromosomes. Alanine, an amino acid, is found in the helical protein structure and this can this forms the cellular filaments that, that is the thick groups of the protein fibers. Steric acid is a fatty acid and this were joined together to form the triisoglycerol and this triisoglycerol are the fat can be found in the fat droplets within an adipose cell. This concludes our discussion on organic molecules and functional groups.